Abdullah Mohamed Farmajo, Presidente de la República Federal de Somalia, a quien invito a dirigirse a la Asamblea. Mr. President, honorable head of states and governments, dignitaries and ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor and privilege to address you on this 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly. It's indeed my sincere belief that the General Assembly is vital in galvanizing multilateral efforts and actions for poverty eradication, quality education, climate action, and promoting inclusivity in all its forms to advance our global agenda for people-centered development, for common progress and prosperity. We in this assembly, more than ever before, must realize and work towards ensuring no one or nations is left behind in the pursuit of progress and prosperity in this age of interdependence and interconnectivity. The Government of Federal Republic of Somalia warmly welcomes this year's theme for the General Assembly, which reminds us all on the importance to double our efforts through greater international cooperation to ensure we as a nation individually achieve the Sustainable Development Goals for reducing poverty, improving the quality of education, addressing the adverse effects of climate change, and promoting partnership and inclusivity in all our actions at home. Partnership in all their forms are a must. If we are to overcome the greatest common challenges of our time, including security, poverty, climate change, and sustainability, in this globalized world, no nation, no matter how wealth, strong or prepared, can individually stand alone against the tide of global challenges which require a common action and coordinated multilateral responses. We must strive to create the condition for individual fulfillment and common prosperity in line with the vision of sustainable development goals. I'm grateful to be here with our valuable partners, of whom many are rep rep uh, represented in this great assembly today for the constructive role they are playing in Somali's successful journey to full recovery from a very difficult past. We are also grateful for the role of the United Nations has and continue to play in Somali's development journey on the ground. We are committed to working with the United Nations to advance our inclusive national development agenda. Indeed, Somalia is a great example of the importance and success of the international multilateral system as it has been benefited from the support of both the United Nations and its member states bilaterally. Somalia's road to recovery, led by its resilient people and government, has come a very long way, and yet we cannot be blind or remain, remain silent on the discontent with the rise in inequality, poverty, and division caused by unfair globalization, which has become dominant in the world today. Without doubt, inclusivity in all its manifestations must come to the fore if we are to succeed in galvanizing multilateral efforts for global security, poverty er eradication, quality of education and climate action alongside the other development priorities. Mr. President, Somalia is also playing a key role in the Horn of Africa's socio-economic development, and we are confident that the cooperation between the Horn of African countries will enhance economic development, political stability, social, cultural connectivity, and most importantly, security cooperation among the countries in the region. Horn of Africa region, region offers unrivaled opportunities for economic development and growth for its people if we can further strengthen the, the political, social, and economic ties between our countries
people because we have many friends who are supporting us all along the way for the interest of peace and security in the wider world, and we thank them. While Somalia promotes economic integration in the region and encourages its business uh, community to invest in countries in East Africa and beyond, Somali communities continue to invest in the Republic of Kenya, which indeed contributes to the growth and economic prosperity. Somalia and Kenya are neighbors on the Indian Ocean coast of East Africa who enjoy peaceful and friendly relations. We owe much to Kenya for their steadfast support for Somali's people over the years. While our overall relations are excellent, our maritime boundaries has never been delimited and is the subject of disagreement between our two sister states. Bilateral negotiations did not achieve an agreement in the past. In order to obtain peaceful and equitable settlement in 2014 and in conformity with international law, Somalia instituted proceedings before the International Court of Justice, the highest legal authority of the United Nations. We are very pleased that the court found that it had jurisdiction to resolve the dispute and that is scheduled final hearing on the merit of the case for the first week of November this year. Somalia, as a member of the United Nations and a party to the statute of the court, is committed to seeing this judicial settlement process through to its end. Somalia has pledged to comply with the court's final judgment and to accept the boundary that is delimited by the court. As a matter of international law, the court's judgment will be binding on Kenya as well. And we trust that when that judgment is issued and the boundary is established, a lasting settlement of this long-lasting dispute will finally be achieved. In addition, on September 3, 2019, Peace and Security Council concluded that African Union is not empowered to intervene this case beyond before the court. Mr. President, I would like to father I would like to I would like to father to report that at the margin of the of the seventy fourth United Nations General Assembly in New York and exactly on Tuesday night, September twenty fourth, twenty nineteen, President Al Sisi of Egypt, who is also the current chairman of the African Union, convened and chaired a meeting between me and the President, of, uh, President Uhuru of, King, of Kenya, the meeting which was very fruitful. We agreed to restore our good brotherly relationship, is strengthening the diplomatic and political cooperation. We further agreed to leave the maritime dispute between the two countries to be resolved by, by the International Court of Justice. Somalia is committed to maintain good relationship with Kenya. Mr. President, Somalia, Somali government is, the Somali government is strongly committed to its ambition and enabling peace building and state building agenda, and we are making clear stri strides toward achieving inclusive politics, strengthening democracy, and constructing the very rights-based national institutions that are the pillars of strong societies. I am proud to report that we have held successful regional elections in some federal member states in the build-up to the planning national parliamentary and presidential election in 2021. And we are determined to facilitate the success of this process through an inclusive electoral bill, which voter registrations and better public awareness of the importance of inclusive politics and national progress. From all this, it's clear that Somalia is a historical example of reform, resilience, and people-driven prog progress and recovery. Today, our national discussions focuses on how to deliver inclusive politics, public services, financial and economic reforms, growing the economy, good governance, advancing regional cooperation, and how to finally defeat the threat of al-Shabaab terrorism organizations with our valuable partners at home and abroad.
Security has been our government's focus and greatest public expenditure since taking office because everything else, including poverty eradication, quality education, climate action, depends on it. We, alongside our international partners, are working tirelessly to rid the last pocket of violent extremism and their terrorist activities from Somalia. This task is by no means easy because of the violent, cowardly, and opportunistic guerrilla uh, tactics Al-Shabaab terrorist issues uses, including bombing innocent uh, civilians and, pri and, 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 and private businesses. However, with our holistic strategic of the radicalization, successful military offensives, the recovery of t uh, territory uh, from Al-Shabaab, and the strengthening of Somali National Army and security capabilities, we are confident that our joint efforts with AMISOM and other international partners will, f will bear fruit uh, for Somalia, its people, and for the region and the global stability. We, we are building a well-trained armed force and right-based security and accountable institutions to take over the responsibility of securing Somalia. Our government, in partnership with AMISOM and other key international supporters, is working hard to achieve this through transition plan in line with the national security architecture. In this regard, I wanted to thank the brave Somali security force, men and women, all the troop contributing countries of African Union, with AMISOM and all our international partners that support the security operations in different and important ways. By no means are these comprehensive reforms easy, but with commitment and absolute determination, we have biometrically registered all the Somali National Army and the human resources audit of the wider security sector in its entirety will be completed shortly. The biometric registration enabled the government to eliminate ghost work workers, assess operation readiness of the security personnel, and make cost saving that will, you, that, that will be used elsewhere to further strengthening security for the Somali people. I'm convinced that Somali's successful security sector reforms will provide us with the best possible security apparatuses to safeguard the well-being unleashed on education and most certainly galvanizing our multilateral efforts for any development anywhere must start with national and international support for education in all its forms. In Somalia, a key symbol of our national recovery has been the enormous expansion of education provision across the public and private sector in all stages of learning. We fully understand the need to encourage, support, and build on the existing public-private partnership model of education delivery with its strong oversight by the federal government. Despite our difficult past, today the design and delivery of quality education and its governance and delivery framework is the most crucial education objectives we set as a government. This is a critical for, for our, our, our young generation to catch up and even perhaps leapfrog in order to compete in globalizing economy and benefit from and, and contribute to achieving the sustainable development goals by 2030. Given the importance of quality education to Somali's peace building and state building processes, as well as its overall development, our government has embarked on ambition reform program, which aims to expand access to education for our children, adolescents, and youth, including those from marginalized community, the disabled, and girls and women. We are focused very cl clearly on improving the quality of learning outcomes, especially at early grade levels for all learners. We are also committed to increasing, increasing enrollment rates ensuring the market relevance of learning opportunities to sustainably grow the economy in creating much-needed jobs 
and injecting further confidence in our people and country's prosperity and prospects. On the practical note, the Somali government is in the process of developing an inclusive and relevant national curriculum alongside rehabilitating all public schools while working hard to establish technical vocational schools and invest in the next generation of teachers and, and leaders in our schools. For the fifth year in a row, Somalia held the national exam successfully, and most of our students, including those that had disabilities such as blindness, participated and succeeded. We are proud of them. We are proud of them all, and will continue to improve their learning opportunities and employment prospects through better policies, stronger partnerships, accessible facilities, and educational leadership. To strengthen quality education globally, we must all share good practices, transfer successful policy, and make the necessary link between education, opportunities, and international peace, security, and development. Mr. President, Somalia is very committed to improving the status of the country's environment and to promoting community resilience for both present and future generations. Somalia has taken major steps in instituting environmental management authorities to implement changes on the national level. The establishment of the Directorate of Environment and the climate change within the office of the Prime Minister, for example, is a step in the right direction and we are confident that the Directorate will effectively lead the development and implementation of the environmental regulations and policies. This is evidence of our commitment to climate actions for a better, cleaner, and inclusive, prosperous environment. Indeed, climate change threatens to increase the, the frequency and severity of environmental impacts, and Somalia and the country with a long-standing coastline in continental Africa is, 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 is already experiencing the effects of rising sea levels and rising average temperature that's exacerbated by the effects of degraded land and deforestation. The 2017 drought in Somalia had significant impact on the environment, economy, and natural resource sector. With ecosystem loses, the damage is estimated at an equivalent of more than 600 million US dollars. The loss in productivity of the natural capital indicates difficult times ahead resources have been decimated and destroyed in some regions of the country. This has directly and indirectly affected the lives Due to this vulnerability, Somali's economy could take much longer to recover, given that it has continued to suffer the repetitive occurrences of climate-related ha hazards. The drivers of vulnerability and fragility in Somalia are complex and, th and therefore requires comprehensive and long-term solutions for integrating sustainable natural resource management and a global environment agenda in Somalia's recovery and national development plan. The lesson from our experience is that climate change or climate action is urgently needed to reverse the catastrophic environmental damage which poses an existential threat to our collective future. Mr. President, let me assure you that my government is fully committed to the outcome of Paris Agreement and equally other multilateral environmental agreement which protect our planet and safeguard the future for all. In this regard, we strongly urge the full implementation and enforcement of United Nations Security Council Resolution 751, which requires all member states to take all necessary measures to prevent the direct and indirect import and export of charcoal from Somalia. This will not only save the environment, but deny the international terrorists as a source of terror financing, which they depend on to hurt the innocent and most vulnerable people in our society. Mr. President, poverty is one of the greatest 
pain a human, a people, a nation can suffer. The government of Somalia is working hard with its people to build a more sustainable future free from poverty with strong social protections. Today we are on the verge of com completing an, in an inclusive ninth national development plan which will guide the national strategic policy and framework for eradicating poverty in Somalia. The process of conducting the national development plan was inclusive, participatory, and it promotes accountability, transparency, and common responsibility for future implementation. Our approach to eradicating poverty is to create economic opportunity for our people, and to do so this, to do this, we are engaged in the ambition, in ambition and successful physical and economic reform programs guided by International Monetary Fund, the Staff Monetary Program, to achieve debt cancellation by early next year through the High Indebted Poor Countries Initiative, HIBIC. According to the IMF, our performance to date has been strong and we have achieved much in a short space of time. We continue to raise domestic revenue, improve national budgeting processes, make our financial system more secure and transparent, while instilling physical discipline in our national operations. We are working closely, both bilaterally and multilaterally, with all our key partners and stakeholders, including the Somali people and the international financial institutions, to secure debt cancellation for Somalia. Achieving this will allow, this, achieving this will allow Somalia to get access to valuable and much needed concessionary resources that will, that will complement our national domestic revenue mobilization to cover the cost of eradicating poverty, improving public services, including quality education and security, and taking effective actions to safeguard our future against the scourge of climate change. Alongside economic and physical reforms, our government has championed a zero tolerance of, uh, approach of corruption so that every dollar is spent on the public goods. If we are to eradicate poverty, we cannot afford to lose a cent of corruption, to, a cent to corruption. Accordingly, we must always ensure value for money in public expenditure and tackle corruption ahead on. This is why I signed the historic anti-corruption bill last week, and my government is determined to deliver on its content for the people of Somalia. Mr. President, let me conclude by reiterating Somalia's strong support for galvanizing multilateral effort for poverty eradication, quality education, climate action in all its forms. In this globalized age of uncertainty, common threats and opportunities, we must all be in this together to achieve common progress, progress and inclusive prosperity. Our global journey to sustainable development may be long, but every step we take together will be rewarded with a stronger society, a more equitable and connected world, and a community of nations is strengthening and empowering through this collaboration. I thank you, Mr. President, and I thank you all in this assembly. En nombre de la Asamblea General, deseo dar las gracias al señor Presidente de la República Federal de Somalia por la declaración que acaba de formular.